Let's talk about each team. We're going to do this with Coach Beheim coming up and Coach Martin as well. First, the Duke Blue Devils. I got to tell you, full disclosure, I said this on my radio show. I had no idea one guy's name on Duke's team before this season. Not one. Zero. I said it. Look, I'm not doing college basketball games, so I didn't study college basketball teams. I personally didn't care who was on Duke's team. Didn't matter to me who was on North Carolina's team. Had no interest in any of it. But I got to tell you, I do now. Bancaro, Banchero, I always say his name wrong. Roach, Griffin, these dudes are some bad boys. These dudes have come together. And if I got a first pick in the draft, it is no doubt I'm taking Bancaro, Banchero. I don't care. That dude is six foot ten. He can dribble it, he can handle it. I asked my son, why do I think this guy's so good? He looked at me, he goes, Dad, because he's a six ten guard that runs like a guard. Woo! I'm not going to lie to you. I ain't mad about that guy. And then when he needs to make shots, oh, he'll step to the top of the key and drill a three. Woo! How good's Roach been? This is a good basketball team. They make shots when they need to. They defend just enough. They play it any way you want. We can go isolate on the block if you'd like. We can run the floor, get it ahead, unafraid. I mean, totally unabashed. I mean, they don't care, man. They'll shoot them in. They're, they're, it does not matter. And this team has come together, I think, as well as any, any Duke team ever. I really do. And I know a lot of you are going to say, come on, Dan. You didn't like them. I didn't know them. I know them now. And I got to tell you, what I know about them, what I see about them, I like. Hey, look, are they the greatest defensive team ever? But no. They're 32 and 6. Now, I want you to think about that. 32 and 6. Uh, Duke fans, you owe me an apology. Come on. And I'm going to put this out on Twitter today. Uh, a few years ago, I did games in the garden. Uh, Georgetown was there, Duke. I can't remember. I think Duke played Georgetown. I don't know. <clears throat> I did two of the games, and I was talking about Wendell Moore. And I told you Wendell Moore Jr. was going to be a star. He reminds me of Chris Carrawell. Wendell Moore Jr. is a leader, man. Wendell Moore Jr. is a catalyst. Yes, I know that Roach. Yes, I know that Griffin. Yes, I know Mark Williams should be a top 10 draft pick. But I got to tell you, Wendell Moore Jr., that's a bad boy. That dude puts it all together. He's Chris Carrawell. Duke fans, you crushed me. You crushed your own. But I'll take apologies. I will. I'll take them. I'm used to it. I'm used to saying things. You all lose your mind, say Dockage is an idiot, and next thing you know, you're like, oh, man, Dockage is right. Wendell Moore Jr., A.J. Griffin, terrific. Now, let me go one second on Mark Williams. Mark Williams is a top 10 draft pick. Now, I don't know if Mark Williams is going to be any good in the NBA or not. I don't know. He can't shoot it. He's not. But I'll tell you what he can do. He can block it. I'll tell you what he can do. He can catch it. I'll tell you what he can do. He can run it. Mark Williams knows who the hell Mark Williams is. And I'm all in on Mark Williams. Love him. I thought he was the MVP of the game the other day. Everybody else doing their thing offensively. I thought Mark Williams defensively was the most valuable player for Duke to get to the Final Four. Don't at me, people. North Carolina. UNC. Man, I'm sitting here at Indiana. And we got... Indiana fans and blogger boys talking about TikTok videos, talking about how Brady Manick has a TikTok video and I criticize Indiana. Let me explain something to you. You can have TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Bumble, uh, uh, Christian Singles, Big Daddy Mingles, I don't give a damn what you do. Tinder, I don't care what you do if you play like Brady Maddox. Now, Brady Maddox dropped 28, 28, whatever. Our TikTok guy went over at Indiana. Brady Maddox decided, I'm wearing a Carolina jersey. Dawson Garcia, who was a McDonald's All-American, think of what's happened here at North Carolina. Dawson Garcia out in the middle of the year. 
So they bring Brady Manick in. All he does is basically lead them in many ways to the Final Four. 29 in the game, 26 in the game, 19 in the game. I mean, he absolutely kicked the living hell out of basically the four teams they've played. That's a, you can tick-tock, you can do whatever the hell you want in my world. But if you go over, how about you get in the gym if you're an Indiana player? That's a personal thing. But anyway, let's talk another personal thing. First year in the program, people say, well, you know, Hubert Davis was left all kind of talent. Okay. Well, let's think about that talent. First, an All-American, Garrison Brooks, decides he's not coming back. Garrison Brooks ended up going to Mississippi State. Think about this for a second. Walker Kessler, who was a first-team All-American, said, no, I'm going to Auburn. Then he became a first-team All-American. Now, Kessler wasn't a first-team All-American at uh, UNC. So those two guys leave. Think about this for a second. When your team, in my case, Indiana, when the fans are making an excuse, you got a first-year coach, Hubert Davis, taking over for a legend. You lose Dawson Garcia to health problems, uh, mental health problems, whatever it was in the middle of the year. You get this kid, Brady Manick, who did not play very well at the beginning of the year. Next thing you know, you roll everyone. Now, they got a little lucky, let's be honest, playing St. Peter's and not Kentucky or Purdue. That's a little different. Don't get me wrong, but you play who's in front of you, right? And all of a sudden, because of coaching, because of workouts, because of improvement, because of confidence, this first-year coach losing all these guys, from a mediocre team last year, goes to the Final Four. A, Indiana, will always have TikTok. (laughs) Jeez. You got to be a damn blue blood. You're a blue blood or you're not, and North Carolina and Duke are blue bloods. Period. Don't at me. Indiana, we got a guy making TikToks that didn't score a point. And was a starter. Good for Indiana. Yay, Ra. Go fight win. Uh, let's talk about Villanova. Justin Moore. Justin Moore is out. You know who Justin Moore is? Justin Moore averaged 15 torn Achilles in their game against uh, Houston. Now, I, I hate this. I hate this for kids. I've talked about this. I talked about the big kid from... Creighton, I hate when kids get these things. I hate you work so hard. You're such an integral part of a team. You are making yourself uh, the dream of a lifetime to get to the Final Four, man. And you saw how much he meant Justin Moore to the team by their reaction, right? Oh, I hate that for kids. I don't dislike it. I hate it because I know how hard you work. So Justin Moore, uh, yeah. Remember last year, Gillespie was out for the year with a knee. Man. All right, so let's talk about Villanova. You know, I got a kick out of everybody before the game talking about Calvin Sampson and how well he coached and how tough he was and how tough his team was and how Villanova and others would wilt. No, bad matchup for Houston. Because, frankly, um, Villanova matched them toughness for toughness, had better shot making had a better offensive game plan. And frankly, when you can't make a three, and that's exactly what Houston couldn't do, you can't win. Now, Houston really well coached. Houston really tough, all that. Don't get me wrong. But the matchup against a culture like Villanova, well, they'll match you tough for tough. You want to go shot for shot? We'll match you shot for shot. Whatever you want to do. It's like that guy at the bar. You want to play pinball? Kick your ass. You want to play pop a shot? I'll kick your ass. You want to go shot for shot? Let's go. Beer for beer? Let's go. I got a bunch of those buddies. And I try to tell people, don't mess with them. Well, that's exactly who Villanova is. And Villanova matched everything. Villanova, hey, Colin Gillespie, Colin Gillespie did not play great, but boy, oh boy, did he hit a big shot when he needed to. And people were on Colin Gillespie's ass, but you got to understand something. When you're not the greatest athlete in the world and you're a two-time Big East player of the year and you've got another team in Houston that is fierce defensively, they're going to get in your ass and they're going to make it personal. 
They're going to make it personal. And that's what they did. And guess what? Gillespie struggled. But guess what else? Gillespie led his team, and guess what else? When it came time, he hit a big shot. Don't be too hard on Colin Gillespie, man. (laughs) Give a little credit to Houston. They were up and into him. Tough. Really tough. Now they move on. And that's it. They move on. It's what they do. All right, the last team, the Kansas Jayhawks. Kansas a little bit like what I'm talking about with Villanova. Kansas against Miami, man, Kansas is that team that goes, what do you want to do? You want to throw it inside? All right. You want to shoot it in? Obagi, let's go. It's what they do. Here's the deal. I said this on a video, and I bet it. I bet David McCormick over nine and a half points. Why? Because I figured, number one, well, Bill Self's always been an inside-oriented guy. And number two, if you're going to beat Miami, you had to go inside to beat him. I mean, it just did. And three, Bill Self's a really smart guy, and he'll figure that out. So I'm screaming yesterday on social media, throw the ball inside. First half, first play, they got it into McCormick, turn around, boom. And then they started dribbling. And Bill Self said it. I love coaches' timeouts. If you pay attention, they'll tell you something if you know what you're looking for. He said, yeah, all of a sudden we just started dribbling and shooting. No pass, one pass. He wasn't wrong. Next thing you know, down six, start the second half. Bill Self takes over. Boom, boom, boom. We're going inside. Uh... McCormick has 12 by the first TV timeout. My toes are tapping, but so is Kansas. And then Kansas got in that booty, got stifling. Next thing you know, boom, jacking up threes, Miami, and the coach Larinaga playing for your grandpa is done. Done. D-U-N, done. And at the end of the day, There you go. That's what happens. When you get blue blood programs, when you get programs that are just special, you put the jersey on, you're supposed to win, you get games like yesterday where there's no way North Carolina is going to lose, Duke's going to win, you know Kansas is making a comeback in the second half, and Villanova against a really good team not only survives – but fights its way through, literally. And I loved every minute of it. I did. I thought it was absolutely great. I'm going to miss this tournament. Uh, Not only are we making so much money on it, and this week, tomorrow, we're going to preview the women's tournament because I'm into that, too. Man, I watched South Carolina. Holy cow. 80 to 50 over Creighton. I watched freaking Stanford last night. It was a tough-ass game. All Stanford did was make all their free throws down the stretch. And pulled away and got a W. It was a good game. Really good game over Texas. Ended up winning by nine, which was a cover. Money spends, people. 